Welcome. Science teachers often teach students how to convert units, doing a method that seems a little bit strange mathematically. Let me give you an example. Uh, for example, we all know that one pound is equivalent to 16 ounces. And suppose we're trying to figure out how many pounds is 80 ounces. Well, what uh, science teachers tend to teach students to do the following. We know that multiplying by one doesn't change a quantity. Therefore, let's take this 80 ounces and multiply it by one. Now, what do I mean by one here? Well, they say, these science teachers, take this relation. Obviously, one pound divided by 16 ounces, and I use the word obviously in inverted commas there, is the quantity divided by itself. One pound is the same quantity as 16 ounces. So in some sense, that's one. Or I can do that around. 16 ounces divided by one pound is also really one in some sense. So they say, these quantities here represent the number one. Mathematically, I'm now in strange territory. But what they'll do is say, okay, let's take the version of one that's appropriate for this problem. Right now I've got ounces in a numerator and I'd like to convert it to pounds in the numerator. So let's put, choose this version of one which has ounces in the denominator to cancel with this ounces in the numerator, leaving pounds in the numerator. So 80 ounces times one, which I choose to write as one pound, oops, per 16 ounces. Ounces, ounces cancel out. I'm left with a quantity in pounds. So I'm left with the number 80 times one divided by 16 pounds and that's five pounds. And that is indeed the correct answer. But you have to admit, if you think about this, this is a very strange procedure. There's no way that one divided by 16 is really mathematically the same as one. There's really something going on here with units rather than the mathematics. So what I'd like to do is explain the mathematics behind the scenes here. Physicists and scientists are, of course, correct in what they're doing, even though the presentation may seem a little mysterious to mathematicians. And this is often the case in the history of uh, between these two subjects. Physicists will come up with wonderfully creative ways to do things that seem strange to mathematicians, but prove to be right in the end. All right, let's do another example and explain what's really going on. Suppose I told you that 20 woogles is equivalent to 32 flugels. If you put 20 woogles on one side of a scale, they're balanced with 32 flugels on the other. And let me ask, how much would 75 woogles weigh? I'll just write woogles for the W for woogles. All right, physicist's approach, I'll quickly do it. We'll say, okay, 75 woogles times one. What version of one do I want? Well, I want woogles on the bottom, so they cancel out and have the units of flugels on the top. This equivalence relation is telling me I want 32 flugels, it's the same quantity as 20 woogles, so that is the version of one. Uh, woogles cancel out. I am in the units of flugels, and I for 75 times 32 divided by 20, and I think I was nice to myself. That turns out to be 200 uh, flugels. All right, what's really going on? Here's the mathematician's approach. We're given this equivalence relation. Well, clearly, if 20 woogles on a scale is balancing with 32 flugels on the other side of the scale, if I double the number of woogles, it balances with double the number of flugels. Or if I halve the number of woogles, it balances with half the number of flugels, and so on. I'm going to choose more, uh, uh, clever choices of scaling. Let's multiply both sides by 1 20th, that's divided by 20. So that then tells me that one woogle is going to balance with 32 20ths of a flugel. Absolutely correct. Makes intuitive sense in terms of scales. But I really want not just one woogle. Let me now multiply by 75 to get that 75 woogles is actually balancing with 32 20ths times 75 flugels. Oh, that's it. Now I'm going to do this calculation, and that turns out to be 200 flugels. Now, in terms of just balancing an equation, this is what's really going on. And you see I've done the same thing as the physicists. 32 over 20, there it is, 32 over 20. But I've just teased apart this, the uh, scaling that I'm doing into two steps that makes logical sense along the way. So this physicist's trick of multiplying by one is a little bit hazy, a little bit philosophically scary, but it is the correct mathematics behind the scenes. It's just taking an equivalence of relation and multiplying by clever choices of scalar. All right, let's do another example just to see what's going on. Um, oh, before I do that, students might often ask, what's wrong with just adding 55 to both sides of this equivalence relation, plus 55, plus 55. Then you'll get 75 woogles equals uh, 87 flugels. As a teacher, can you explain exactly what's wrong with that thinking? Let's go back to the balanced scale. 55 watts are you adding onto both sides of the scale? Anyhow, okay. Back to where I was going, a more complicated example. Uh, 
I'm going to follow the scientist's approach, but it's really just breaking down into various bits of scaling, if you like, as a mathematician. I'm going to ask 60 miles per hour. What is that in meters per second? Well, let me break this miles per hour so it'll be very clear. Whoops, over at 600. Very clear what that means. 60 miles per hour means I'm really going 60 miles for each one hour. So now I can see I'm dealing with miles and hours. But I want to get to meters and seconds. So let me write a whole bunch of conversion relations on the side. Um, I'm dealing with miles. One mile, I'm to know, is 5,280 feet. Uh, one foot, I'm to know, oh, let's see, no, one meter. I don't know what one foot is. One meter, I know, is 3.28 feet. Okay, this get me now this gets me through miles to meters. A mm, little bit of funky stuff going on there. Uh, hours and second. One hour is 60 minutes, I can say that for sure, and one minute is 60 seconds. All right, there's four relations, four different versions of one, these physicists would say. So what I'm going to do now is take the 60 miles over one hour and multiply by lots of different ones. Here goes. 60 miles, one hour. Oops. Uh, let's get rid of the miles. And I want to say, well, this is the relation with miles in it, so I guess I've got feet. So that's going to tell me that 5,280 feet is one mile. At least I've got rid of the miles now, and now I'm in the units of feet per hour, according to the physicists. I really want meters per hour. So let's put feet on the bottom and meters on the top and write the correct version of one for the second scaling. Uh, let's see, one meter is 3.28 feet. So there's the physicist's version of one. Voila, I'm now in meters per hour, but I don't want meters per hour, I want meters per second. But before I get to second, I've got an intermediate step of minutes. So let's get rid of the hour on the bottom by putting on the numerator and put minutes on the on the uh, denominator. Uh, one hour is 60 minutes. Great, now I'm in units of meters per minute. Final step, let's make this meters per second. So I don't want minutes on the bottom. Let's cancel by putting minutes on the top. I want seconds on the bottom, and one minute is 60 seconds. And I think now I am in units of meters per second. And there's a bit of arithmetic to do here. Du -du 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 -du. It's, what is it, 60 once times 5,280 once times 1 3.28 times 1 60th times 1 60th. And I don't know, it's roughly, according to my calculations, 26.83 meters per second. There we are. If you go 60 miles per hour, you're going 26 meters every second. Well, that seems high. Maybe my arithmetic's off. Double check me. All right, thanks very much.